In this video, we'll talk about Corini bacterium diphtheri. So, Corini means club shaped. You can see these bacteria and they exactly look like a club. So, these are gram positive rods, these are non motile, aerobic, or facultatively anaerobic, non acid fast non-spore forming and they just have the orientation like a V or L. When it comes to identification, gram staining can somehow detect them that characteristic V and L shape which are gram positive can give rise to a preliminary idea about this particular bacteria but obviously there are better staining methods. Gram staining is often variable for this bacterium. That is why aniline dye staining is much more reliable. In this case, the green bacilli with purple blue metachromatic granules are pretty much characteristic of the diphtheria, uh, the, the Corine, Corine bacterium diphtheri. So, here the purple staining is due to metachromatic granules of this bacteria. Also, these bacteria can be detected using direct immunofluorescence assay but that's very expensive so it's not really recommended then corine bacterium diphtheri is also known as klebs and loferlers uh, bacteria because it was discovered by two german bacteriologists edwin klebs and frederick loffler so the main cause of pathogenicity of Corine bacterium diphtheri is the AB toxin or diphtheria toxin. So it has a A and a B subunit and this is the major virulence factor. But this is also encoded by a lysogenic bacteriophage. In a moment it will be clear. So cell types like neurons and cardiac muscle has receptors for these kind of toxins. That is why these are the cell types which are highly affected. Also one has to know that this AB toxin is capable of tamper around with the process of um, translation that means production of proteins. Every cell need proteins be it enzyme, transporter, channels all of those are produced in the cell. If the production procedure is gone then the cellular functionality would be compromised. Okay. It has to be understood that the, the strains of Corinebacterium diphtheri which are infected with the bacteriophage can produce the toxin. Not every strain can produce this toxin. So this is translation procedure. Let me quickly refresh your memory. So here amino acids are brought in by the amino acylated tRNA and a peptide chain is building up and this process is known as elongation several factors such as elongation factor 2 augments this process the diphtheria toxin does modification to this elongation factor and this modification is known as adp ribosylation it attaches a adp ribosyl group to the elongation factor and it overall prevents the elongation and prevents the production of protein overall it blocks protein synthesis for any cells which are highly metabolically active like the cardiac cardiomyocytes like the neurons they would suffer like a lot okay these particular toxins or diphtheria toxins are actually encoded by a particular gene known as the tox gene which is actually incorporated to the bacteria by the, uh, the bacteriophage and that encodes for the diphtheria toxin. It's noteworthy that this tox gene expression can be repressed by DT repressor and this repressor is augmented by ferrous level. Now let's talk about the symptoms, uh, clinical symptoms. So diphtheria has a pseudo membrane appearance that means a thick gray membrane over the tonsil pharynx or nasal tissues and when it is scraped it would bleed. Then there is bull, bull's neck. The neck gets swollen because cervical lymph nodes are also swollen and there is a cervical lymph adenopathy. Okay, there is systemic complications like myocarditis and neuropathy. 
so neuropathy happens because neurons are highly metabolically active they need all the time protein synthesis and diphtheria toxin might abrogate that process and cardio uh, or myocarditis means inflammation of the muscles of the heart and these cells are also highly metabolically active anyway other than that there could be airway obstructions which might lead to respiratory distress diagnosis includes clinical diagnosis by looking at all these uh, ENT examinations one can look cl clearly look at the presence of pseudomembrane that is one of the uh, suspected infection of uh, coronary bacterium diphtheri now culture is the method to isolate those bacteria so lofler's medium or tellurite agar these are the medium of choice in this case also toxin of diphtheri diphtheria can be detected by uh, elk test which is basically a immunodiffusion based assay for any of these uh, bacterial identification or viral identification identifying a unique bacterial or viral signature can be done by pcr in this case the tox gene can be amplified from the patient sample and if it is positive that means the patient was infected by diphtheria when it comes to treatment antibiotics are the go to because this is a bacterial infection also there is antitoxin that can neutralize the diphtheria toxin antibiotics like penicillin and erythromycin can eliminate the bacteria and prevent the transmission or further aggravation of the disease supportive care like airway management in case of airway obstruction treatment of systemic myocarditis all of these kind of scenarios would help to uh, benefit the patient so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a big thumbs up get more notes flashcards in our facebook page and instagram page links are provided in the description and if you like this video please support us using super thanks this is a tiny heart shape icon with dollar in it your small contribution is like a motivation for us see you in next video